Aloha and welcome to Hawaii Together on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcasting Network. I am Joe Kent, Executive Vice President of the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, and we are a nonprofit think tank um, dedicated to advancing individual liberty, economic freedom, and accountable government. Uh, I'm filling in today for Dr. Akina. Um, at the Grassroot Institute, we're always trying to work to transform Hawaii into a place where people have more opportunities to prosper. Uh, but one person says, Hawaii can learn lessons from the UK about what to avoid in creating a better business climate. So here to discuss entrepreneurship and Hawaii's economy is economist, Dr. Gerard Derricks, who's also the new director of the Center for Entrepreneurship and Education at Hawaii Pacific University. Aloha, Gerard. Uh, how Aloha. are you doing? Just a little correction, the Center for um, Entrepreneurship and Economic Education at uh, HPU. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. And so you're going to be educating about uh, entrepreneurship and economic education here. Is that right? Well, that's right. Yeah. So, I mean, Hawaii is a small state with big economic problems, and uh, we're all familiar with these. So um, high cost of living, lower wages for comparable jobs compared, compared to the mainland. And uh, so, um, reason, oh yes, we're we're, we're very uh, familiar with the <laughs> with yeah. the economic challenges here, and I'm so glad that you're here to talk more about them. So, uh, could you tell us first, though, about your background? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, actually, I was born and raised here in Hawaii, but uh, like so many of us, I kind of wanted to see the world a bit. So, after high school, I uh, I, I traveled a bit. I actually did my undergrad. Uh, in Japan, which is not all that unusual for Hawaii students. And then from there, I went to, uh, to London. I studied at the London School of Economics. I got a PhD there. And uh, I liked living in the UK and uh, then got a job in, in Oxford. But always in the back of my mind, I, I wanted to come back and, uh, and you know, be, be back in Hawaii, contribute to the community here. And uh, there's this, this new center opening up here at HPU. And I had a chance to uh, I'm back and uh, I'm excited to be here. Well, we're so glad to have you back in Hawaii and uh, welcome back, I guess I should say. Um, so now what is your goal at your position at HPU? Right, so um, well, part, of, part of it is a traditional academic role. So I'll be teaching, I'll also um, doing research uh, in, in economics, but a major, major thrust of this center is actually to uh, help educate Hawaii's youth about economics. And of course, if you're actually teaching economics, well, that means you're gonna be teaching free market economics. You can't have one without the other. And so that, that's part of this initiative. Another part of this in initiative, which is, of course is also in the name, is uh, entrepreneurship. So to make, make, make uh, Hawaiians more aware of, of entrepreneurship and, and give, give them uh, a bit more, more support and uh, understanding of, of what, what it would take to succeed in entrepreneurship and uh, to, to bring that mindset to Hawaii. And of course, th this is to hopefully, um, on the one hand, improve economic conditions here. And a part and parcel with this is to, as we educate people, um, to, to help improve policy as well. Because in a democracy, it's, it's the people that really matter for pushing forward uh, policies. I see. Now you've lived in Hawaii and in the UK, and now you're back. So what similarities and differences do you see between the economic policies here and there? Well, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of similarities. Um, I mean, on the one hand, you know, Hawaii is known for its relatively high taxes. The UK has also uh, quite, quite high, high taxes. Um, cost of living in the UK also substantially higher than the rest of, of America. And actually, you know, coming back here to Hawaii, um, I think Hawaii is actually cheaper than, uh, than the UK. You get a lot more value for your money here than uh, you do in the UK, which is interesting uh, to see. Uh, another big social issue, it's becoming more divisive all the time. I know it's, it's especially even in the last couple of years, become more to the front in Hawaii is the high cost of, of housing. Uh, in Hawaii, in the UK. So I actually lived in the most expensive location 
in the United Kingdom when it comes to houses, price of houses versus median incomes. So it was a ratio of about 11 to one in, in Oxford, which is where, uh, where I was living. And uh, it, well, it's becoming a huge social issue. Everyone kind of knows growing up that there's, there's no hope at all of me being able to buy a house. Now, when, when, when you say 11 to one, you're saying that um, for if someone makes um, you know a certain amount during the year, it would take 11 times that for them to have afford uh, paying off a house, right? right. 11 times their salary. This is before taxes. That's right. So, you know, if, if, if your salary was $1 a year, an average, an average cost of the house would be 11 bucks is essentially the equivalent there. Yeah. I see. And that, that's, of course, before taxes. So you know, probably a third at least of your taxes are being, being taken off, of your salaries being, being taken off by taxes. So it's more, more like about a, a 16 to one type, type of ratio that we're looking at. And that's, and that's if you, you spend no money on, on food, no money on clothes, no money on vacations, you're not buying a car uh, and so on. So Right. And in Hawaii, I believe that figures around six to eight uh, for us. So if it's 11 in the UK, then that means- uh, well, it, this, this, this is one city in the UK. So I think- uh, UK, Oh, yes, yes, that's right. The UK as a whole might be something similar, like six, six to eight. I have to look at the numbers. But yeah, Oxford was, was particularly high because I mean, basically Oxford is really- a suburb of London. It's about an hour away by train. And- but, but the housing uh, cost is high there. So now, what, what is the reason for that, though? What, um, why is it, is it just because uh, people are greedy, or or why is that? Well, it's exactly the same reason why um, housing is expensive in Hawaii. On the one hand, you have a a growing population, and that's that's the case with the UK, especially in terms of immigration. And on the other, you have a extremely restrictive uh, supply environment. In the UK, it's much worse. It's actually much worse than what we have here in Hawaii. Um, most people in, in, the, live, in the UK will, will live in these, these terraced, terraced houses. And basically, these are all kind of workhouses from back in the, the mid 19th century, where you know, it's just one house that's just right next to the other. You can hear your neighbor vacuuming and having a row with their, with their kids or whatnot. Um, and the, the amount of space you have in your home is much smaller. Typically, people don't have garages or places to park uh, very conveniently. Um, you have a lot less space, actually. But still, price, prices were really comparable in Oxford to what they were here a couple years ago. I know now, now prices are, are much higher. So I'm not sure if it's, it's exactly one-to-one like it used to be. But... Um, you, you pay a lot more there for, for less in the UK. It, it's the same, it's the same um, co- root causes uh, in the UK. It's just we, we've had probably more time for this to, to uh, compound. And what are the root causes, by the way? Well, back, back in 1947, so after World War II, what happened was is that the development rights for land were totally nationalized. So prior to that, you, you could essentially build with certain restrictions what you wanted to uh, on a given, on a given uh, plot of land. But uh, the, the state said, no, 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 those property rights, they're now ours. And now you have to c- request permission unless any time you want to alter uh, any structure whatsoever, if it's not like some garden shed, basically. Uh, anything bigger than that, you, you need permission in order to change that. And, and basically, it, this is very difficult to get. It's similar to the um, hi- historic restrictions in Hawaii, where um, if a building or area is marked as historic, then it's very difficult to change the building. So, uh, and, and then we have all these buildings that are that you know are very old and they're nice to look at, but uh, um, h- hard to update. So, is that the case in UK too? Yes, but it's it's much more extreme. It's as it's as if every single house you know, had this designation. It's historic designation as a worry. And there, there, are, oh, there are historic designations where you can't even change like in, internal fixtures of the house and all, all kinds of things. And you're criminally liable if you, you know, change things. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I was living in, in a house that was built in the 1850s in, in, uh, in the UK. And it's not because I wanted to, I would have preferred 
and more modern housing, but you're just not allowed to build it. That's interesting. In Hawaii, a lot of the housing, especially in downtown uh, Honolulu, was built in the 60s and 70s. And, um, and since then, um, the housing policies have become very restrictive. Uh, in fact, the most restrictive in the United States. And that's made it much more difficult to build new housing. So as a result, we have all of these uh, aging uh, buildings where the plumbing is going bad and the roofs needs repairs and the elevators are going out and the HOA fee, the homeowners association fees are starting to tick up. And that doesn't seem to be going in the other direction. So in the UK, is that a problem in the UK as well? Well, just if you think the problems are bad now, just wait a hundred years and see what your houses look like then in that situation, the expense of, of upkeep in, in that case. I mean, you get all kinds of problems. I mean, um, you know, very imaginative plumbing, shall we say, in the, some of these old houses and you know, wood that's just you know, rotting apart from uh, decades, decades of use and exposure, brickwork, you know, also similarly, similarly falling apart. Um, it, it's a big problem. It, you just gotta, and basically it's just slapdash repair it for the next person to come along. We, we don't have any of this you know, new, new builds to any significant degree to deal with this. And we haven't had that for many decades now. Um, so you, let, let's go to another topic. Uh, taxation in Hawaii is among the worst in the nation in many areas, uh, and it impacts job creators as well. Um, now, how, what is the taxation level like in the UK? Um, well, we have some, some taxes that are comparable. So I would say income tax on a federal plus state basis, it's pretty similar in the UK. You can't say it's, it's a very different. So high, high, punitive. Um, one of the things that we do have in the UK that's significantly higher than here is here we have the, uh, the excise tax, which is in all but name, of course, just a sales tax. Although they don't, they don't want to call it that. That's what it is. <laughs> um, so well, that, I mean, it, it, it's a sales tax, but it also hits at every single le level in the production chain. So, right. um, so it kind of ratchets, it, it kind of rolls up like a snowball and hits the consumer at the end where the tax is actually built into the price of the product. So, um, so the general excise tax um, is a little different than a sales tax, but it's thought of as a sales see, tax. That's right. I see, I see, right. It's not, it's not about the sale of the final goods. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, you're right. That, that would be different. And in that sense, you're right. It basically compounds. And so it's very difficult to kind of unravel at the end exactly huh, what's being attributable to, to this tax. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, maybe, maybe they are comparable. But in the UK, anyway, we have the, the value added tax, the so-called VAT, which is just on the, the sale of, of final goods and services. And so we get to see right up front what the, the total uh, charge is, and, but it's, it's 20%. Of, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, 20%. Well, we will uh, talk a bit more about uh, taxation and some other laws that are similar between Hawaii and the UK. When we return, I'm Joe Kent at the Grassroot Institute, and uh, don't go away. Aloha, I'm Christine Linders, physical therapist and board certified orthopedic clinical specialist. And I am the host of Movement Matters, a show that is designed to bring you the best physical therapy tips and exercises so that you can have your best body and do all the things that you love. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 11 a.m. on thinktechhawaii.com where I show you instructional videos from the top of your head to the bottom of your toes to get your body feeling its best. Remember, life is better when you listen to your physical therapist. I'll see you on Tuesday.
Aloha and welcome back to Hawaii Together. We're talking today with Gerard Derricks, the new head of the Entrepreneurship and Economic Education Center at Hawaii Pacific University. We just finished talking about taxation, although I do want to add, ask one more thing. Um, it's hard to compare the taxation levels between Hawaii and the UK because Hawaii's tax is kind of a hidden tax. Um, so we're not really sure how much of a percent it takes uh, from the from the goods. But you just said in the UK, it's a 20 percent tax, basically. And so what does that do to businesses and entrepreneurs? Yeah, I mean, it's very a sales tax is very punitive from an entrepreneurial standpoint, because it comes before you've actually made a profit, right? So it, you've got to factor this in already. So you know, most, most types of corporate income tax is based off of, well, if, if you make a profit, well, then, then we're going to tax you, right? But a sales tax is different. It says like, if you're selling something, you know, we're, we're, we're going to take, take this share. So that, that's going to dampen risk-taking activity. It's going to dampen people's enthusiasm for, for starting out. And a lot of new businesses, especially... Well, a lot of new businesses are going to lose money for the first year or two. Uh, entrepreneurs, they're, you know, they're, they're like, like everyone, they need to learn, learn their business, learn what works, what doesn't. And while you're trying to sustain that, um, to have to pay sales taxes on, on profits you're not making just makes it even more difficult and, and makes you probably uh, more willing to throw in the towel, towel before your uh, endeavor finally bears fruit. So. Um, dampens risk taking and um, makes it makes it more difficult for the little guy to get started. I, would say. Well, I hope Hawaii uh, learns a lesson from the UK on how hard it is to do a business and the effect that taxation has on entrepreneurs as our taxes again are being uh, asked to be raised again at, at, uh, by lawmakers. Um, now another law that's similar to a tax, it adds costs, is the Jones Act. Um, some people think of it as like a Jones Act tax. Uh, it's the Jones Act, of course, is that uh, over 100 year old law that uh, protects the American uh, shipping industry. Um, and it has now uh, we, we've done an economic study on how much that has uh, uh, added to the cost of living in Hawaii. And you can get that at grassrootinstitute.org. Org. But uh, what is your take on the Jones Act as an economic policy? I think it's, I think Hawaiians should be angry about it. It's a totally anti-Hawaiian law uh, re requiring the cost of living on, uh, in Hawaii to be much higher than they would otherwise be. If you think about it, so this, this law was imposed 100 years ago. So on the one hand, uh, Hawaii wasn't even a state. It was until, what was it, 57? So we didn't have proper legislative representation uh, when, it, when, it come, when it came to actually putting this law into place. And so you know, we, we should feel disenfranchised very, very much so by the imposition uh, of this law. Um, and uh, so I think that, that, that that's an important uh, bit. And another is, is that, so one of the arguments for this law is that it's going to imp it's it's important for domestic security, so national security. Well, <laughs> any military strategist will tell you that the landscape has changed vastly since the 1920s, right? Air travel, nuclear warfare. Uh, now we have drones. So I, I think that the military justification for this law. I mean, any any reasonable military strategist, and I could be wrong because I'm not a military expert, but it's, it would seem to me that well. The U.S. has been at war for for you know for 20 years at least in the Middle East now, and uh, we didn't need the Jones Act to protect us from the Taliban. That's that was clearly wrong. And if if we did have a war with China, well, uh, I don't see how a, a few merchant marine ships or whatever it is uh, these uh, these cargo ships are going to help with, uh, block the, the, you know, block these uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles from uh, from you know. I from landing here. So, yeah. so the um, national security aspects of it are a bit outdated, you'd say. Uh, so now, um, those are really interesting arguments, and I uh, look forward to talking with you more about the Jones Act and a lot of other uh, regulations that affect Hawaii's business climate. But I want to talk now about 
uh, the positive, because <laughs> uh, yeah. we want to talk about how to solve uh, Hawaii's problems. So what would you do to create a more business friendly climate in Hawaii? That's a good question. I mean, coming from the UK, uh, it's quite clear to me that Hawaii does, does still have some great advantages. And one of those is our, our connection to the mainland and that we are a unified economic market with, with that mainland, which, which means that actually the, the value that we get for our money is still much greater than probably almost anywhere, anywhere in the world. Um, you know, the UK, we just had Brexit where the United Kingdom left the European Union common economic area. So we no longer have free movement of goods between the EU and the UK, we also no longer a free movement of labor, but we, we have that, of course, being a, a state, we have that to protect of our commerce laws with, with all of the rest of the United States. So that, that's an incredible benefit that, that's uh, not, not to be, not to be poo-pooed. It, it's uh, when, when you go into Ross or you go into Costco here, the, the type of value you can get for your money is, 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 is incredible compared to the rest of the world, for sure. So, I see. So, um, lean into our advantage in um, being part of uh, the United States and all the benefits that comes with it. But uh, and and also, I want to ask you about tourism because, of course, that is the golden goose in Hawaii. But there are many people who uh, feel that we have too much tourism, um, and there's a debate there. So, how do you think about that question? I mean, I, I, I find it kind of, uh, kind of perplexing. I, I think we should be wanting to um, you know, really do our best to maintain our competitive position with tourism and want to promote and increase the amount of tourists that, that are here. I mean, that, that's just going to um, redound to a stronger economy, to higher wages, to better opportunities for our children. And when you think about you know, how, how we can bring in as many tourists as, as possible to, to help our economy, um, you know, in, in a sustainable way. And I think that that's definitely, I mean, definitely possible. I see. Now, um, you have a lot of eminent economists at your alma maters in LSE and Oxford. Um, and I was just curious, uh, do you have any favorites that you'd like to talk about? Um, or are there any economists uh, living or dead that you admire? Well, yeah, one of my favorite economists is also... Uh, an LSE alum is Friedrich Hayek, and not, not only for his uh, economic ideas and, of course, his great uh, debate with, uh, Maynard, um, with uh, John Maynard John Keynes. John Maynard Keynes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but you know, also his insight into um, legislation was also, um, also, and I think he won the Nobel Prize for that while, while at the University of Chicago. Um, uh, incredible work. I'm also a fan of uh, Ludwig von Mises, but in terms of uh, living economists, I'd say that uh, my favorite uh, living economist probably probably be uh, Richard Werner, uh, who studied at Oxford, and now he's he's at uh, De Montfort University. And I think his ideas on on actually, actually basically what he what he's uncovered through his research is that banks actually mint money; they create money. When when uh, First Hawaiian Bank. And Bank of Hawaii is, is giving you a loan, they're, they're creating that out of thin air. And when, when, they, when you pay back uh, a loan, you're, you're destroying money there. And this actually has really interesting uh, implications for how the economy works because mainstream economics cannot explain at all the, the Japanese boom and bust that we experienced very probably here in the late 80s and early 90s for our current models. But Richard Werner, who actually, actually spent a lot of time uh, in Japan, working uh, as an investment banker before he became an economist, has actually un uncovered this this mechanism, and I, I think uh, um, I've also shown through this actually how we can we can harness the power of money creation through the banking system to funnel that towards entrepreneurial endeavors, and therefore uh, drive economic growth and prosperity as has happened historically in Germany with their small banks that focus on lending. To, to small businesses, and also as we used to have, and still do to a certain extent in the United States. Although before the savings and loans crisis, we, we had a lot more small banks 
the United States, they're, they're gradually getting, getting killed off, but we st still have more uh, banks on a per capita basis compared to most of the world. I see. Well, it sounds like what you're saying is um, a, a property rights, low taxation, low regulation, access to capital are all components to uh, a better climate for entrepreneurship. Um, but in closing, I was curious, uh, what are your, um, what is your advice for Hawaii um, as we look at the UK and where you've come from there? Um, and what should we do? What shouldn't we do? Yeah, I mean, uh, oh boy, uh, advice. Well, you know, one of the things that I would wish is that politicians would take a different stance towards businesses. At, at the moment, they, they seem to have an almost antagonistic stance for, towards businesses. They don't really, don't really seem to care, you know, what, what happens to, to someone who's invested, you know, basically their life savings and maybe decades of their life into, into their, their restaurant or, or a, a bar or a nightclub or whatever it might be. It, it seems like that uh, they just don't care. Well, you know, just deal with it. You know, just, you know, figure, you figure it out, uh, the, this, this, this new environment, and, uh, and we don't care. We're just gonna impose what we want to impose, and it, it doesn't matter. When, when really they should be like, well, you know, we need to preserve the, these entrepreneurs, keep them, Keep keep them uh, um, you know running along and, and excited about operating in Hawaii and wanting to expand and wanting to grow and we want their kids to look at what's happening there and and their colleagues to look at that and say yeah you know I, I could be an entrepreneur too uh, uh, I could create my own business and uh, and to foster that type of environment and uh, uh, yeah, it's until interesting. we have that political change I think it's going to be it's going to be difficult to to really change change the culture. Um, it's interesting how sometimes we use taxation as a punishment and uh, other times we tax like businesses, but still want them to thrive. So, um, so either way, it's a punishment is what you're saying. Yeah, it, it is a punishment and the, the lockdowns and restrictions on tourism and, you know, and, and comments to the media that, oh, don't come to Hawaii as a, uh, has happened uh, recently with a prominent politician here. I mean, that, that's just, it's just un unfathomable, you know, thinking about that really. Well, thanks so much for giving us your perspective, um, Dr. Derricks. And I really appreciate you um, joining us here on Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, my name again is Joe Kent. And I work at the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii. Thanks so much for joining us and aloha.